Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Janelle Riley. I'm an editor at Variety, and I'm so thrilled to welcome you to this Q&A with the assassination of Gianni Versace. Um, at this time, please join me in welcoming one of the show's stars. He's been seen in movies like La La Land and The Big Short. And for his performance as Jeffrey Trail, he has earned his second Emmy nomination. Please welcome Finn Wittrock. Hi. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on another amazing performance and a, a Ryan Murphy joint. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> this is an audience of SAG actors, so yeah, I actually cool. like to start by asking, how did you get your SAG card? Uh, I got my SAG card on, uh, well, I, I was, uh, what's it called? Uh, I was allowed to do the uh, pilot of a cold case back when I was uh, 19 without getting it, and then I did episode of ER when I was You're just out of high school. Yeah. Wow. And that's what that's where I got it. Were yeah. you a patient or a Yeah, I was a I was a Amish guy who was on his Rumspringa no. and he was shot in the arm uh, trying to get drugs or something. Wow. And then his girlfriend wound, who was also in the incident wound up forsaking the Amish uh, religion and uh, becoming a a pagan New Yorker <laughs> or Chicagoan <laughs> wandering but he went off back? me. Yeah, I went back to the oh, farm. Oh, wow, yeah. to the farm. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, congratulations on Versace. It, it's such an amazing performance. And obviously, you've previously worked with Ryan on The Normal Heart. And is it three seasons of American Horror Story? Uh, yes, technically, yeah. Technically. Well, in, in this <laughs> uh, this season, Roanoke, I was unrecognizable, basically. Yes, you Because I had this, like... Uh, almost mask on my face from all these prosthetics because I was this uh, inbred hillbilly really <laughs> fucked up dude uh, so if you blink you'll miss me in that but yeah but all in all three are yeah. you a little offended when people recognize you from that like, yeah. like hey weren't you in uh, yeah. no not me yeah <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you have a great working relationship with Ryan is it did he bring this to you and it was a no-brainer or did you sort of have to stop and think about it uh, I, I I usually when he says I have a great part for you. He's not lying, um, so it wasn't too much thought. But I, I did. I, I remember when he first like uh, s sort of emailed out of the blue, like I have a part for you. He like sent me the first four scripts, and I don't know if you guys watched this the whole we series. Five. Yeah, Just this now, is five. Yeah. But in the in a, you know it works backwards in time, and so in episode four, I basically I I have like one scene, and then I die with the hammer to the face you know and so i like read the first four episodes like this is really good i wonder when jeff retrail who i'm playing is going to show up and then i kind of showed up and was immediately killed wow. and so i was i was just like uh this is great ryan but yeah. is uh i gonna is there more to this it's like yeah it works backwards didn't you figure it out <laughs> <laughs> well, that's hilarious because you are so significant in five and six. We yeah. really learn your backstory, but I, I can't believe he sent you the four episodes you're not in. Well, I think the other ones hadn't been written because there was ah. very kind of uh, there was a couple of scenes in this where they like kind of rewrote stuff the night before. It was oh, very really? uh, uh, yeah, it was it was a, it was interesting inter interesting process. Um, Is that typical on a Ryan Murphy set, or was that unusual for this? It it can be typical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we were. There's a lot like they were they had stuff in Miami. They had stuff they were shooting here So the shoot was kind of very it was very tough. Honestly, mm -hmm. it was like very all over the place and Also to keep in mind like it's work. It's written out of sequence It's written kind of backwards and it kind of jumps around and we're shooting completely out of sequence yeah. so like it was a that was a big challenge of just like keeping a chronology in your mind of where you were and what you had done and uh, uh, did you, you are? like this yeah. person now, or do I? Was he gonna? Did he already kill me? Or yeah? Oh, that's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, I am curious. How did you um, first get to know Ryan and become one of his repertory players? I love that he has basically this like a theater group that he brings back over and yeah. over again. That's really that's a really special thing about working with him. Um, I, I I I did this audition in New York for the Normal Heart, which was uh, I I remember I did it at like. Uh, it went well, I thought, and then I didn't hear anything for like two months, and then I sort of found out that I got it, and then, and then I, I, I did that. I did like it was sort of this um, part that was he, 
you sort of see the guy at the beginning. He's like uh, with Taylor Kitsch, and then uh, a little while later, you find out that he died of AIDS. And it, it weirdly coincided with I was doing this movie Unbroken, and I had to drop all this weight. I dropped like thirty something pounds, and it just so happened that right when I was done with that, they they started shooting this stuff where I was dying on this plane. So I was like already incredibly emaciated and skinny, and I got to shoot the normal heart and then literally on set af after that scene Ryan was like I think I have something for you on uh, my show American Horror Story have you heard of it it's like yeah I've heard of it uh, <laughs> and that, really that was it and then yeah. that was that that's yeah. so cool yeah. so when he calls is it like I said a no-brainer or I mean is there anything that like you wouldn't play for him because we're we're talking just just like I said your character in Roanoke yeah. like is pretty out there I mean I mean, I'm sure that he could write something that I would say this is too far. <laughs> but so far, uh, I've I've accepted every challenge. Yeah. I'd like to know what's too far for uh, Ryan Murphy. <laughs> um, we had a question uh, from Jesse Bloom, I believe. Oh, right in the front. I wanted to know if you were aware of Versace's murder and the murder of your mm -hmm. character, Jeffrey Trail, um, and how much research you put into the background of Jeff. Did you get to meet with his family? Yeah, no, I I didn't know much about any of this except I I knew about I knew that Versace was killed by someone, mm -hmm. and I that's kind of the extent of my education. I, it was interesting if whenever I would talk to someone like from the Miami area uh, or just from Florida in general, they knew a lot about it. So I kind of realized that it was a very local like story in that way. Like it meant a lot to a lot of people, and they kind of knew about the spree killer spree killings as they call them because the whole thing is only like a week and a half that Crazy. he I, I, there's a different differentiation between a serial killer and a spree killer apparently because a spree killer just sort of flips and just does it not so predetermined um but uh there's this book by maureen orth this uh writer and i think she originally wrote it for the vanity fair and then turned it into a novel called vulgar favors and it kind of chronicles in in great depth um the story the the chase of uh Cunanan and then kind of like this does kind of goes into all of the victims sort of past lives and who they were and what they became um so that was like the biggest sort of research bible for me and then there's this there's that scene where he's um doing the interview and like his face is covered in shadow oh and 48 hours um, was it yeah yeah and that is real and almost almost a reenactment of what really happened. And so I got a hold of that tape. Um, and it's really powerful. You don't mm -hmm. see Jeff's face, but like you hear this sort of reserved emotion in his voice and um, the sort of, you can like feel the injustice bubbling up, but how, how, how kind of repressed he keeps it. Um, that was it. I didn't talk to anyone in his family, couldn't really get a hold of anyone. And also felt like it just felt like that was enough, you know? It was like, sometimes sometimes you, you just need enough research to get your imagination sparking, and then you're like off to the races, you know? Uh, you, you mentioned Unbroken, in which you played another real life person. Um, and I'm curious, when you play these people who actually, you know, lived and breathed and have families maybe, do you feel an extra responsibility? Um, do you prefer it or, because sometimes you have a lot of research to draw yeah. on, that makes it nice. Um, but do you feel like kind of the weight of, you know, you're representing somebody who really existed? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it's like both, it's like you, you love it because there's so much, um, research to be gleaned you know there's like uh there's a real person who really happened you can see photos and read stuff about him but at the same time there's like a there is a pressure to do it some justice you know um yeah yeah especially with someone who's, who's died a, a mm -hmm. gruesome death you know you you want to uh sort of keep their memory alive. There's something kind of weirdly spiritual about that. Yeah. And also for someone who really was a hero in so many ways, yeah. you know, was, was such an amazing person. And one of the things that I really loved about this miniseries was I don't think I would, I'm embarrassed to say, I wouldn't know who Jeffrey Trail was right. were it not for this story. I mean, were you sort of surprised when you yeah. uncovered his story? Absolutely. Uh, and how this sort of juxtaposition of like, he's like this kind of upstanding uh, sailor, He's actually very patriotic. Um, he like loves his country, and then he's sort of got this secret that he has to kind of keep hidden. And that 
I think because he had to repress it so badly, puts him into this sort of uh, this relationship with Cunanan, yeah. who sort of led him down this wormhole. You know? Yeah, um, and I mean, there's so much I could say about Andrew Cunanan, but he is played by the brilliant Darren Chris, yeah. um, who is also a sort of a Ryan Murphy repertory player. Mm -hmm. Did you know him at all before shooting this? We we were you know theater brats in New York. Yeah. We'd like run into each other here and there. But not, I didn't really know him that well. But we uh, got to know each other very quickly, kind of. We kind of both know a lot of people in common and sort of speak the same language. So he was so easy to work with yeah. and fun. Like he, um, it's such a dark uh, character in such dark territory. He was so kind of buoyant on really? set uh, and fun and sort of goofy. Yeah. I'm curious about that. Like yeah. after he's done a scene where he's terrifying you, that then does the end snap into? Oh yeah, <laughs> they, they, they start singing his a musical. You know, You're, oh that's hilarious. Yeah. I was actually going to make that joke. He whips out his guitar, but he he yeah. literally did. <laughs> yeah, he actually does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think so it's funny. a kind of a uh, it's a way to kind of survive. I mean, this this shoot for him especially was so long and grueling, and he's in every second of it. Um, I think it's a way to kind of keep yourself uh, sane. <laughs> you know, it's like. You gotta keep, gotta keep things light when you're not yeah. in the dark. What about for you? Was it hard for you during this time? You know, I don't know if you're someone who can leave your characters behind at the end of the day, uh, but somebody like Jeffrey, I feel, would like really get into your system. Yeah, the, you know, it's funny. It's like, I, d I don't, uh, as an actor, like want to always be like, oh, this character is killing me. You know, that can be very, I think actors can get kind of um, self-pitying in yeah. that way. Uh, but there are times like that interview scene that it does, you kind of leave and it does uh, uh, tear you up a little bit, you know. How did it come out? Did people know that was him on 48 Hours or did that come out after his death? That, yeah, that came out later. It came oh, out, yeah. the interviewer, I forget his name, um, he said once he died, he said, oh, that's the guy that I interviewed. He was sort of, was safe now to kind of blow his cover. Wow. Um, said, yeah, that was Jeffrey Trail. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So people didn't even know before that. Right. Oh, wow. But he did help. I mean, Don't Ask, Don't Tell was sort of repealed sometime later. I mean, because of people like him coming out of saying it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for you, what ended up being like the most difficult part of playing this character? If there was a particular scene or just sometimes the, the, the weight of kind of being in something, you know, yeah. so draining. Well, honestly, the hardest part was I had to be dead for like two days. <laughs> uh, like they, when they, they roll me up in that carpet, I, I'm right. really, that's really my body. It, uh, <laughs> yeah. I honestly wondered uh, about that. Yeah, yeah. They had this great, amazing dummy that they created, which was, it's very scary, like how lifelike it is. Like, it's like my size and weight and basically my face oh my God. dead. Uh, and like, and they just like, fucked it up like they wow. they tore it up they bloodied it up um but were you there when they was, did this uh yeah i was oh, seeing God. it yeah uh it's yeah it's a very bizarre feeling <laughs> but anything that wasn't like a f wide shot they ended up just using me wow and again like a whole prosthetic thing like i was blind in one eye um and like just covered in blood yeah so they sort of like that can get just get a little tedious and it's not like uh, there's nothing fulfilling about playing dead. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like other things that are like, uh, you know, you walk away, you're like, oh, I did it. I put in a good day's work today. Yeah. And then, and when you're doing that, you're like, oh, I got it. Need to go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what they did with the dummy of you? Did you ask to keep it's it? A, oh, I think it's in a basement somewhere. I hope because they probably use it, use it again. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say odds are if you go back to American Horror Story, they'll need it for something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> funny. Sometimes they do these ca these face casts. I don't know if you've ever done oh, one yeah. of those. If they have to like redo your face on something, and there are these like warehouses where they'll keep all these. Actors' really? faces. Yeah, that's it's so bizarre. Very weird. Yeah. <laughs> so so there's a horror there. movie in there somewhere. I was just, I was literally yeah. just thinking that celebrity zombies. <laughs> yeah. I think your characters in uh, Ryan Murphy projects have tend to come to grisly ends. Yeah, so what's he can, that about? <laughs> have you ever asked him? Like, it did I do something? Always kills me in crazy ways. <laughs> did you? I, I don't just, ask him. No. Yeah. I just yeah. He's got his. He's got his reasons. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm curious. Say. Has there been? Um, I don't know any feedback or response from anyone you know who is portrayed in this movie or the families of them. Like, has anyone reached out to you about? No, not Jeffrey? really. Yeah. No, 
I will say a lot of like, I feel like a lot of um, uh, older gay men have been very affected by the mm -hmm. story. I have like, especially like, I know some like very successful sort of, um, of ambitious men who had to like really hide for a long time and yeah. stay in the closet. And I think that uh, that's who, I, I think Ryan also knows those people, I'm sure. And so it, I have like had very special sort of pe uh, encounters with people who were yeah. moved by that. Well, I mean, this particular episode, too, the way it's constructed with, you know, Jeffrey going on TV and then Gianni mm -hmm. coming out, like, it's, it's yeah, so yeah. beautifully dovetails. Yeah. yeah. That's Tom Rob Smith, this writer. He, he, he put this structure together that was really unique and, and interesting, you know, like, uh, and, 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 and how I, like, if you watch it, like, Judith Light has this amazing episode in episode two, and it's like, it's like these, there's like a spinal, spine of the narrative and then it goes off in these sort of offshoots yeah. and then comes back to the main story. Um, so I don't know really how cool. you can keep yeah. track as an actor, even though you're used to shooting out of sequence, yeah. I would be so confused. I literally took, I, I, I took the pages apart and reordered them in sort of in, really? in sequence so I could have some reference point. Wow, yeah. Yeah. I would actually like to see that cut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could probably do that in Final yeah. Cut Pro, you know, just put it in order so we, you we know what's going on. You guys probably know how to use that yeah. software, right? You can, yeah. you can do that for us. It's like, have you ever seen they recut Memento in oh, yeah. order? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. It actually, it's not as good. Exactly, <laughs> right? You're like, it's still They did great. it with the Godfathers, too, didn't they? They did, did, like, all of them in sequence. But then, like, the end of it's just, like, Pacino for, like, two hours yeah. just being really morose. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Not That's the most perfect description yeah. I've, I've ever yeah. heard of Godfather 3. <laughs> um, I have a couple questions from the audience. Um, again, I apologize if I uh, mispronounce anyone's name. Uh, this is, is it Brendan or Brandon? Brandon. Brandon. Um, wants Brandon. to know, you are a Juilliard graduate. Yeah. How you much too? of... Oh. <laughs> anyone? Any Yardies here? He told me they're called. Yeah. Um, wants to know, how much of your training from Juilliard do you still use today in your work? Yeah, uh, definitely a lot. It's sort of, um, it's, it works its way into you kind of almost unconsciously in lots of ways. Um, but I definitely find myself kind of uh, remembering like my, f honestly, my first year of acting class and like the sort of the most basic things of like, um, think of the environment that you're in and like these sort of real, these real like fundamental things, which when I was there, actors would come back and say like, the first year is the thing, you'll remember it forever. And I'm being like, oh, come on, that's, <laughs> uh, that's such a load of crap. Like, I, can we do some plays already? But honestly, like that stuff is, that, those fundamentals are the things that uh, I keep coming back to. Um, we did a lot of uh, Alexander technique at school and uh, um, the sort of way, I, I think people think it's all about just like standing up straight. Uh, but it's really, uh, it's a way to kind of make your your body respond to your impulses and instincts, and uh, make it make your body receptive to uh, everything that's going on inside. And that that's also really stuck with me. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff. Uh, it was also I I did uh, Juilliard, especially when I was there, was very much geared towards theater, like especially classical theater, and it still is, um, which is in incredibly. Just helpful. I think it's just like doing Shakespeare and the Greek sort of uh, it gives you a sort of spectrum of humanity that you don't usually when you're doing modern stuff you're sort of in one sort of specific part of your psyche but if you if you can do those classics it kind of it stretches you in a way that uh, really nothing else does um, yeah I also, when I was at, just out of school, I did this soap opera, All My Children, and honestly, it was like its own boot camp, and that oh, was yeah. incredibly, like looking back on it, as in like, terms of like what I th know as an actor, like to go from like Juilliard to All My Children was like this <laughs> crazy juxtaposition, and that's when I started uh, like actually looking at myself, because before that, I was I hated watching myself and I would like make myself sit down and watch this soap opera, which, uh, you know, uh, I mean, we might all love or hate soap operas, but uh, the challenge of making uh, very 
unnatural dialogue <laughs> uh, sound realistic is like its own huge acting challenge that uh, uh, is, is not as easy as it looks. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever have amnesia or an evil twin when you were in All My Children? No, no, I just, I just you know, slept with my girlfriend's mom, you know. <laughs> the usual. Like yeah. you do. <laughs> yeah. um, you mentioned Shakespeare, and we actually had a question about that um, from John Eisen. Great. Okay. Wants to know how important the Shakespeare work has been to your development as an artist because it seems like it's impacted you a lot. Yeah, definitely. I, I kind of grew up doing it. I, uh, my dad worked at this place, Shakespeare and Company in Massachusetts. So I would like, it was just a, um, as a kid, I was, I, I, I would play like the messenger boy in the Merchant of Venice, you know, and I would just like sit and a lot of uh, summers just sort of listening to it. And I think that honestly, just going to plays and being a t being a literally spear carrier in something um, for my formation as an actor was definitely uh, very influential. And not even not, like not, I'm saying like not even doing it every day, but like watching it be done, um, especially watching it kind of night after night. Um, it just it, uh, it it it's like an osmosis, you know. It uh, it feeds you in kind of unconscious ways that you mm -hmm. might not able to articulate you know what I mean did you know when you were doing those plays as a kid you wanted to be an actor or was it just for fun I it was it was for fun yeah. and then I kind of realized as I got older that there was nothing else I wanted to do <laughs> uh, I thought you were gonna say nothing else you could do but that uh, too yeah that's <laughs> definitely true do you have a favorite Shakespeare yeah. play you're dying to do or one that you have done uh I did I just did Othello that's last right. year in New York that's which right. was one of my favorites yeah. for sure uh, it was, and we saw, I got to watch David Oyelowo and Daniel Craig go head to head every yeah. night. It was very cool. And Rachel Brosnahan, who's, uh, she was Desdemona, sort of amazing. Uh, I really, I'm hungry to do a history. I really want to do Henry really? V. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I was thinking Coriolanus for some reason. Oh, really? But, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, you're a Shakespeare <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> but I actually like the um, the comedies more than the tragedies. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm a big uh, Much Ado About Nothing yeah, fan. Which, yeah. yeah, I mean, you could play any role in that if if you wanted to. Like Twelfth Night. You yeah. know, that's the only one I've never seen. Oh, really? Yeah, other than movies. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah does, is anyone doing a production of Twelfth Night right now? Because odds are someone, someone in L.A. is. is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a question from A.J. Billions. In the front, oh. uh, wants to know what's your process when first reading a script or choosing a new project. Oh. Wow, um, that's a good question. <laughs> I, uh, I, I everything's different, you know. Um, I think I think um, finding out where you fit in the story, like um, really, really trying to look at the whole thing at first glance objectively and not. Like do the actor instinct of like just immediately highlight all your lines, you know, uh, but like to really try to understand sort of what the overall piece is supposed to be, and uh, and if you can if you can keep if you can have some idea of that in your mind, then you can sort of figure out h how you best um, help that story do what it's supposed to do. Does, it, does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. um. And how do you sort of choose your roles? I mean, you know, I, I said when Ryan calls, you do it. But uh, yeah. in other cases, what draws you to a project? I mean, I'm ch honestly just in the place in my career. Like, I'm not even at the place where I'm really choosing. I, m most, things, most things that I'm going in, f I'm still fighting for m the majority of jobs that I get. Um, and sometimes I'm lucky enough to get offered something. Mm -hmm. um, I, f you know, I find myself leaning towards things that... I find uh, relevant. Uh, I, I mean, you know, I, I want to do work that in, has some influence to a modern audience and that's somewhat on the pulse of the times and that I find um, current in some way, even if it's like this, which is looking back to make something mm -hmm. that's, I f that is current. And th 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 I was worried about that, like, don't ask, don't tell, isn't that pretty 90s and dated? And then it was like, <laughs> and then literally, like, as we were filming, it was like the, transgender ban for the military thing happened and it was like right right this is this this is re this is mm -hmm. relevant you know um kind of shockingly timely yeah actually. shockingly yeah. timely <laughs> yeah and yeah and like doing like i got to do this movie the big short which was like mm -hmm. that's like the ideal of what i always want yeah. to be doing it's like yeah. things that are sort of on the cutting edge and 
pushing the boundaries and also talking about something that's like I, I know, some kind of important cultural conversation. And that sound too pretentious. <laughs> I could be wrong, but didn't you just work with Barry Jenkins? Yes. New movie? Yes. Oh, that's oh, exciting. Man, it's gonna be so good. Yeah. Uh, I have just a, I have a couple scenes, but um, it's gonna be a beautiful movie. There's a preview out now. Um, oh yeah. If Beale Street could talk. Uh, it's based on this James Baldwin novel, which is like pure poetry yeah um, and he's like a he's like a poet he's like this sort of uh, high-minded like ultra intelligent sort of um, guru of a man that's yeah. so cool yeah. I cannot wait for that yeah. uh, we have a question from Cornelius someone pretending to be Cornelius someone being shy Maybe Cornelius didn't like the show. <laughs> you lost Cornelius. Yeah. Uh, well, get he, his vote. It's a good question, so I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, how do you deal with nerves before a scene? Oh, yeah. Uh, I get more nerves when I'm doing a play. Sure. I, always get ner I always get nervous before a play. And sometimes I get nervous, yeah, uh, doing this. I mean, filming is more, there, there is a way to be more comfortable, especially when you know everyone mm -hmm. involved. Um, that you can be more free and th th those don't get in your way. But uh, the thing I always like learned and have tried to try to do is like use it, you know, use the nerves. Yeah. Uh, we had this teacher at Juilliard, Michael Kahn, who's um, he was like, uh, someone said, I don't know, they said like they're doing a scene like I feel nothing, and he was like, great, that's so interesting. You to be a person who feels nothing. What mm -hmm. is what a remarkable thing. Like do that. And it's like, I'm nervous. Well, don't, let's not, let's, you're not going to act like you're not nervous. So use the energy of those nerves to uh, uh, put into your, to what you're doing, you know? What project do you think you've been most nervous on or, you know, really wanted to get right? Oof. Uh, boy. I, uh, I, I. I was I just I did this other play, The Glass Menagerie, just with recently. Sally with Sally Field. Yeah, you were yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and I play the gentleman caller, if you know that play, and uh, it's like one of the most beautiful scenes he has ever mm -hmm. written with with Laura, which is its own pressure. But I was like, I would I would wait for I don't enter for the first hour of the thing, <laughs> and you'd think that would be relaxing, but I was like alone in this broad, the Broadway backstage, like this cavernous dressing room. Um, sort of all alone to, with my own demons in front of me, like waiting to go on. <laughs> and that like added this sort of level of anxiety that I really hadn't uh, experienced much before. Because usually once you're, once you're in it, then it all, everything else disappears. But mm -hmm. like the, the build up to having to go on stage and they talk about the gentleman right. caller for literally a, an hour. Yeah. And then like everyone's waiting for him to come out <laughs> and uh, it's like no pressure. You know? <laughs> Plus, you're working with this cast of all stars that you don't want yeah. to. Yeah, you yeah, don't want no to. big deal. <laughs> yeah. um, it's sort of a cliche question, but I am sort of asked. This is your second Emmy nomination. Uh, you're previously nominated for American Horror Story. Um, how did you get the news? And and when it's the second time, I, like I don't imagine it feels like old hat. Like you're like, oh again. But <laughs> sort of, how no, did you thing. react? Uh, I, this was a to this one was honestly a total shock. Like yeah. I really, I hadn't done much of the this sort of stuff beforehand. I hadn't yeah. done much uh, publicity. And also we shot this like a year ago. That's right, it was a long, um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I was uh, I'm on the, I was in the Television Academy this year, vote, I was nom voting to be nominated, whatever. Nominated voting for yourself? Nominated. I was voting for myself, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we, you get sent like all the, you know, the free DVDs sure. and like the amount of DVDs that were in my house. <laughs> was, I was drowning in it. And I was like, this is how much television is on right now. Mm -hmm. There is no freaking way like I will be nominated. Like there's, yeah. it's just, it's just doesn't even make sense. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was, uh, it was a great surprise. I mean, not just you, um, but the show, it's like 18 yeah, nominations, I, I think. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm competing against my good, with, against Edgar and Ricky Martin. We, it's just like, what is life? <laughs> this is so bizarre. <laughs> that it, you guys pretty much own that category. I love it. I don't know. Jeff Daniels <laughs> is also there. You know. Oh, I've never heard of him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, he already and John has Leguizamo. Emmy. It's like ridiculous. That is like, insane. How is this my life? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, so it truly is an honor being nominated, but that I hope is, you know, really uh, we're all rooting for you. Oh, um, 
This is so Thank cool. you so much for being here. Thank you. This is, uh, means a lot to me to do this. Yeah. If you, you've probably already seen the whole series, but if you haven't, you can catch it on FX now. I just did a binge the other day, and it's so great to watch all in one row. Um, again, thank you for being a great audience. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you.